Now, I'm going to let you listen to a testimony by an officer named Jackery Jackson. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his first name properly. Um, he's a Portland officer, and he's talking about the um, problems during the BLM protest in Portland, right? And he basically lays out that, yes, there are people that come from outside of the community that cause problems and then want to blame it on Black Lives Matter. They pretend to be all about Black Lives Matter, but they're really not. They're there to undermine Black Lives Matter and cause problems for the community, right? Because it doesn't make sense. Like, why would Black people destroy their own community? It doesn't make sense. Well, it's because there's people who don't like Black Lives Matter. There's opportunists, and they come from outside the community and destroy it, and then the media doesn't do proper investigation, and they blame it on Black Lives Matter. Now, obviously, the police are actually, or people behind the scenes, they're actually finding out what's really going on. They know what's really going on, but it's just the media that's not reporting it properly. So just listen to what he says, and then um, then you'll have a different perspective, because this is not only happens in Portland, wherever there's a Black Lives Matter um, protest, you'll find instigators, you'll find uh, provocative, uh, uh, provocateurs, agent provocateurs. So just listen to his testimony. So what was it like in that capacity in the first few weeks um, when the fence was up around the Justice Center for that RRT response? I'll say this. I got, I got to see folks that really do want change like the rest of us that have been impacted by racism. Um, and then I got to see those people get faded out by people that have no idea what racism is all about. Never experienced racism. They don't even know that the tactics that they are using are the same tactics that were used against my people. And they don't even know, they don't even know the history. They don't know what they're saying. Coming from someone who graduated from PSU with a history degree, it's, it's, it's actually frightening on how, you know, they say if you don't know your history, you repeat it and watching people do that to other people just because of what they decide to do with their life. Um, what I, are some of those interactions that you're... So a lot of times someone of color, black, Hispanic, Asian, come up to the fence and directly want to talk to me. Hey, what do you think about George Floyd? What do you think about what happened about this? I go up to the fence, someone white comes up, F the police, don't talk to him. That was the most bizarre thing because I could I could see it I could see it coming. I even had a young African American girl uh, tell me why is it you guys aren't talking to us? I said, honestly, this is now the 20, I think it was 23rd day of doing it. Every time I try to have a conversation with someone that looks like me, someone white comes up and blocks them and tells them not to talk. And then right when I said that, this white girl popped right in front of her. She said, he just said that was going to happen. I said, told you, I told you. She, and she looked at the girl and said, why did you do that? And I, 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 I straight up, I said, you know, I've been called the N word. She's been called the N-word. Why are you talking to me this way? Why do you feel that she can't speak for herself to me? Why is it that you feel you need to speak for her when we're having a conversation? And she couldn't answer my question. All she said was someone told me to do it. So that that has been a very strange thing to watch. I'm cool with you know people feeling like they wanna help a movement but then when you go to a gentrified community and the first, one of the first pictures I saw that of one of the business that was looted was a, a black owned business. I'm like, they, they, they're not even from here. They don't even know what they're even doing. So that to me was very angering watching, you know, a business that was looted and that business is across the street from a Safeway where before my father became a police officer here in Portland, he worked security at that Safeway. Talk about history and roots. And these folks don't even know what they're even doing. And and so it's divisive, it's 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 hurting the community. And I mean I saw that press conference. Clearly the community was not happy with that. And they even asked for the violence to stop. And they still are coming out and doing these having these violent 
interactions with other citizens, the police, and at, at some point you just go, what what is what is the end goal? You know, bloody bloody Sunday, Selma. Those folks marched because they want the right to vote, and they literally legitimately were beaten in the street for civil rights to, to have rights that they were told they couldn't have because they were not even human. Uh, and, and then having folks scream and yell that they're being peaceful protests, but you, you're not peaceful because it is violent. And and I actually had a cousin who went to one of the marches and he left. And he said, this has turned into something else. This is weird. So having an African-American male marching and then leaving, it, like I said, it, it's been very eye-opening. Uh, but I did have great conversations. I, I met two young brothers who were literally after I had taken an explosive, I had been hit with a full beer can, uh, a rock in my chest, frozen water bottle had hit me. Um, I met two young brothers that were out cleaning up the street. They had two garbage bags and they were just running and cleaning up. And uh, a few of us from my team, we went over and we had to shake their hands. I was, I was so moved by them and so impressed. And they said, you know, their words, we're from here. This is our, this is our city. Why well, I don't understand why people are coming here and destroying it. And we want to show that, you know, this, we, we want to clean it up. And I, I was absolutely, I, I, we, we, we took, we, we let them take a picture with us. Um, I didn't take a picture they took they had their camera and they had a picture taken, but I, like I said, I, I was just so moved by that. So there's been highs and lows. Yeah. Um, I know you and I were talking the other day and you were sharing just some of the, the hateful and racist things that you and other officers of color have been subject to. And I mean, I was just floored. Um, but I think that's some of the stuff that people haven't been seeing or hearing. And we've worked very hard within our agency to try and recruit and retain um, a diverse population of officers. Um, can you share a little bit about that experience? It, it says something when you're at a Black Lives Matter protest, you have more minorities on the police side than you have in a violent crowd. And you have white people screaming at black officers, you have the biggest nose I've ever seen. And you, you hear these things and you go, where are these, are these people gonna, are they gonna say something to this person? No. So, and that's just one example. Um, having people tell you you know what to do with your life that you need to quit your job that you need to you know you're hurting your community but they're not a part of the community and and once again you you as a privileged white person telling someone of color what to do with their life well, and you uh, absolutely and, and you don't even know what I've dealt with what these white officers that you're screaming at you don't know them you don't know anything about them and there are racist people out in the world. Absolutely. There are bad cops out there in the world. We don't associate with those people. They make us all look bad. That's not something that I stand for. That's not something that my coworkers stand for. And, you know, I, I, I've, I've been called on you know, calls, the N word. I don't know. I can't even count in, in the, the time that I have been a police officer. Um, and having white officers jump in and defend me and me telling me, you know, just ignore it. And them being absolutely uh, shocked. And you, you really get, you, and, and, they, and they get to see it. And, and so, like I said, when you're standing on the line and, and, and they're getting called those names and they're being accused of, of being racist when you've seen those officers um, helping people of color uh, getting blood on them trying to save someone's life that's been shot gang violence uh, domestic violence and you you see them and, and, and they're truly trying to help save someone's life and then they turn around and, and are called a racist by people that have, have never seen anything like that that have never had to put themselves out there it's it's just it's, it's, it's real it's, 